Back on TYT Sports, talking more boxing with Robert Exel, the editor-in-chief of Boxing.com. The main attraction on Saturday night in Carson, California, was Nonito Donaire against Toshiaki Nishioko, the number one contender out of Japan. Uh, Nonito Donaire pretty much did what he had to do. He took care of business among uh, a hostile, I wouldn't even say a hostile crowd, but there were many boo birds in the crowd. And uh, as uh, Bob Papa said, who was calling this fight on HBO, it's hard when the table setter is Brandon Rios, Mike Alvarado. I completely agree with him, but overall, it was not the most thrilling fight. Donaire did what he had to do, and he knocked him out in nine rounds. What did you make of Nonito Donaire and his knockout ability in this fight? Well, his knockout ability. I, he fought the fight he had to fight. He fought the fight that he was he was able to fight, given that uh, Nishioka didn't really come to fight. He sort of came to survive. He didn't let his hands go except for a couple of times in the fight, and whenever he let his hands go, That's he, when he got, got caught in return. Yeah. So uh, I think Donaire, again, did what he had to do, but it was a far from scintillating performance. The knockout, I believe I already told you, came in the ninth round. Donaire is now 30-1 and one with 19 knockouts. Nishioka, who will probably retire now, uh, is 39-5-3. and three. So what could possibly be next for Nonito Donaire? We talked about Abner Mares, but again, there are many obstacles to overcome in order for that fight to be made. So if that fight is not made, well, first, let me ask you, can you see that fight being made? Uh, it's possible, but it doesn't seem likely. I mean, there are promotional issues that need to be overcome, and those are those promotional issues are probably insurmountable at this point. Um, there just seems to be too much animosity between promotional entities and boxing for that fight to happen. I could be wrong. Uh, I'd like to see it happen, but um, but I have my doubts. Okay, so let me ask you then, since I mean, I think there's a consensus that it probably will not happen. What could be next for Donaire then? Uh, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, I need to sort of look at, uh, at his schedule, but he also has to look at, at his performance. Uh, this is, I mean, again, he keeps winning, he keeps stopping fighters, but uh, he, his performances, uh, he, I don't know that he's slipped per se, but I don't know that he's growing as a, as, a, as a fighter, and I'm not sure exactly why that's the case. He might have not brought up his power with him as he's moved up in weight. That's a possibility. Sure. Another possibility is that success, the lack of hunger, has become to affect Nonito Donaire. He takes on tough opponents. This guy looked good on paper, but of course he did not look good in the ring. So in turn, Nonito didn't look good in the ring. So I think there needs to be some sort of reassessment of his career, either from uh, Donaire's camp or from his promoter, Bob Arum. Last question for you, Robert. How frustrating is it for a fighter when they prepare all this time, they train their ass off to perform well in front of a crowd, and then the guy, similar to Omar Narvaez, simply comes in, he looks good on paper, seems like he'll put up a fight against Donaire, and then just drops a bomb and pretty much just fizzles out, fights to survive, and doesn't really put up that, that much of a fight. Well, one has to be prepared for everything when one goes in the ring. The fighter might fight like Narvaez, or might fight like uh, Nishioka, or he might come in with a, with a, with a bazooka. Uh, one has to prepare for everything, and Donaire is a professional, and, and he needs to prepare as though he's a professional, and that means preparing or being prepared for whatever may occur. Robert Exel, the editor-in-chief of Boxing.com. You can follow him on Twitter at Boxing underscore com and follow his fantastic writing at www.boxing.com. Thank you, Robert. Great. See you soon, Rick.